Portugal's famous Vinho Verde, green wine, is naturally slightly effervescent. So is there any point in turning it into a sparkling wine? Well, we have to find out. Lab Sparkling Brut coming right up. Hi guys, welcome to yet another edition of Big on Wine, the show which, uh, as you may well know by now, attempts to bring you news, clues and reviews. Indeed, we try to keep you up to speed about just about everything that's happening in the world of wine. And my wine of the week for this week is an interesting one, and it's this one here. It goes under the very, very short name of Lab Sparkling Brut. And the vintage is 2017. And this wine comes in for a price where I am of just a tad under 13 euro a bottle. And as you can see, it is a sparkler, a sparkling wine. Yes, indeed. Now, this wine is from Portugal, from northern Portugal. In fact, the official designation is DOC Vinho Verde, and the producer is Casa de Vila Verde. Now, Vinho Verde is produced in northern Portugal, and the actual Vinho Verde area is to the east and to the north of the city of Porto. Indeed, the Vinho Verde area extends right up to the border with Spain in the north. Now, uh, Casa de Vila Verde, the producers of this particular wine, are based in Caide de Rey in the Susa subregion, uh, 50 kilometers or so northeast of the city of Porto. And the grape in question in this particular wine is the Lurero. So the same grape which goes into most uh, white Vino Verde, which is produced. Now, for those of you who haven't been following the channel uh, previously, uh, we've gone over these things a couple of times before, but let me just fill you in. Vino Verde or green wine, it can in fact be white rosé or red. So Vino Verde, the Verde doesn't refer to the green colour. Green, in fact, refers to the stage at which the grapes are picked. So the grapes are picked young when they're slightly unripe, which means the sugar content is relatively low, the wine is acidic, and also the alcohol content is relatively low. And in fact, in this particular wine, the alcohol content is 11.5%. All right, now what we're dealing with here is a sparkling wine, even though the standard white Vino Verde is often slightly bubbly, slightly effervescent. So what we've got is a slightly effervescent wine that's been turned into a sparkler. And let's take a look at it in the glass and see what we can find. Now, I'm not quite sure of the method that's been used to give it its sparkle, whether they've used the carbon dioxide method or whether they've used the natural champagne style method, but the bubbles in the wine are what shall I say? They're not bad in size. I always prefer very, very small bubbles. This has got kind of small to medium sized bubbles in the wine. But as we can see, the wine in the glass is very appealing, has a nice colour to it, has that pale straw gold colour. Everything is good so far. Right, so I think it's time to try the wine now in the nose and see what we can find. Here we go. Now in the nose, the wine um, is fruity. Um, it doesn't have that kind of toasty aroma which you would normally associate with a champagne or a cover. But of course, we're dealing here with a budget priced wine. I mean, this is only what, 11, 12 euro a bottle where I am. In the nose, uh, fruity. Um, a little hint, a little hint of sweetness, although it is a relatively dry uh, sparkler. This, a hint of lemon, um, a hint of lemon, and also uh, uh, quite a strong hint of apple in there. Very nice in the nose, light, fruity, um, with as I say, lemon and apple notes in the nose. Very pleasant in the nose. Right, 
time to try it now uh, in the palette and see how we get on here. Here we go, looking forward to this. Now this is a relatively dry sparkler, as the designation would suggest, Brut. Um, it has nine grams of uh, residual sugar. You have to remember that with, when we're talking about sparkling wines, normally there's slightly more sugar in them, even though they are dry in terms of their general category. This has nine grams per litre of residual sugar. That would place it on the borderline if this was a still wine between um, a, a dry and an off-dry wine. It has a very, very nice citrusy freshness and acidity, quite a lively attack in the mouth. Um, nice acidity, not overwhelmingly uh, acidic, I have to say, but very, very uh, prominent flavours of citrus fruit and apple. So I'm getting lemon, I'm getting lime, and also the same apple notes which I got in the nose. Could even be something slightly more oriental in the mix there as well, maybe even a touch of lychee. But anyway, nice acidity, fresh, young, an easy drinking wine, lime and apple in the mouth there. Okay, now the serving temperature of a wine like this is very, very important. Now this needs to be served absolutely cold. So five to six degrees, so straight out of the fridge. Keep it in the fridge for a couple of hours, serve it direct from the fridge. Five to six degrees is the right temperature for this wine. Now, how are we going to be enjoying this sparkler here? Well, I would say preferably outdoors in the sunshine with a group of friends. But of course, you know, this is February after all. Okay, so this is one for the summer to think about. Um, this would make an ideal uncompli com uncomplicated aperitif. If we're thinking about food, then fish, preferably pink fleshed fish is the obvious choice. Why not chicken dishes too? Um, a nice big summer salad would also make the perfect accompaniment. All right, my verdict. This is an unpretentious, easy drinking, sparkling wine for relaxed social occasions and summer outdoor gatherings. And I'm going to give it three stars out of five. Okay, folks, many, many thanks for tuning in to this week's video. And of course, this was a little introduction to an unusual product, uh, a sparkling wine based on the uh, traditional Vigno Verde recipe. Lab, sparkling brut, uh, vintage 2017. Not bad at all, I enjoyed that. Okay, if you've enjoyed what you've seen and heard, then please do feel free to give us a big thumbs up. Yeah, give us a like. We do enjoy getting those. Drop a comment down below if you feel that way inclined. Share the video around. And of course, if you haven't done so already, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And while you're about it, why not hit that little bell icon down below? And of course, you'll be informed as soon as every new video is uploaded. And actually, I'll be back again next week with another great Wine of the Week for you. But uh, until we meet again, this is Tony Melville signing off and saying, hey, take care out there. Be good to each other. Enjoy your wines. And cheers. <laughs>